All right, all right. I'm, I'm excited to get this actually, like... Because now I'm actually... Because now this quest is, like, functional. So what I should do... What I should probably do... Yeah, I'll, I'll set this up. I'm going to get my gamepad set up, and I'm actually going to test through this whole quest. Let's see, so I'm going to temporarily... Pop this out. And actually get my controller. So I want to see this quest actually in action. And sort of, and I have a fun idea for this as well. So here I have, where is that uh, fake? What I might have instead of this is actually have this in here. And you know what, I'll do this now. Basically, if the player goes through this cave, I'll say, Oh wait, I should probably lower the volume of that. There we go. Let's change this rotation. So now, I'm just gonna have this fake arena access here. So the player will actually be able to just get this if they explore the caves thoroughly enough. And I'm gonna put that in here, so like... <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so that's all good. Really indicate that notes and items are important. Or blah, blah, blah. Let's do a little test. I want to do a, sort of a victory lap of this quest so that I can see it in action. <clears throat> Excuse me. And sorry for being 20 minutes or 15 minutes late to the stream. I had the wise idea of instead of eating, uh, doing nothing for an hour, and then eating in the last 30 minutes of my break, which did not work out so well. But okay, let's do... oh wait, no. There we go. Actually, let's get this guy as well. Yeah, we'll get that. So that way we get a quest. I don't know if I like that uh, quest thing though. So basically, the player has to either do this quest, let's see, or they have to, they can do something in here. Or they have to go to this place, and then they can talk to a guy and continue the quest. But none of that's really conveyed right now, and there's not a direct relationship between them, so I might just cut that and simplify it. That does mean, though, that, like, the quest is very simple right now, but I guess it's fine. Because <clears throat> I think I also need to do a second draft of a lot of these quests to add more, like, emotional content. Because, like, it functions, and it has all the pieces that I want, but it's also not really... It's not really an interesting story in terms of, like, emotion. You know, this guy's attacked, you find out why, and then you stop it. And that's, like, the, that's the beginning, middle, and end of the story. And there's not really any, like, twists to it.
Yeah, I should also add, like, navigation to these guys so they're not so completely brainless. Hmm. I think... Hang on. I'll just... Well... Yeah, I'll add it to here. Let's do, like... See, I don't mention his name unless you've talked to him. Oh yeah, and I still need to add the farm here. Okay, so this all is good. Oh, that's not good. So Byro's quest is now not correctly implemented. Ah, it's because of this. Otherwise, there we go. So now, it first starts with Viro being saved, then it starts with the task. Then it does this. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Alright, actually, let's do... Use journal... Okay, there we go. And so, okay, and that's indicated. You search the villagers are performing blood sacrifices. All right. So I should hopefully, I should make this place a little bit more clear because one, Byro talks about having a farm and he doesn't have a farm right now. Let's see, and I'm gonna get my chat window to a place where I can see it. So yeah, right now, a lot of areas that are pretty sparse. What I might do is just really ho <clears throat> is just really hone in on the uh, uh, what have you. I completely lost my train of thought. No, the the level of content density that I want for the game in this demo area, and then let players play test that. <clears throat> You know, because I think my next steps are, after this, I want to make the game feel complete still. Like, that's still something I haven't really done. Despite making a devlog, like, months and months ago saying I did. Because the game has an ending. But it's not very, like, it doesn't feel complete. Like, it feels very truncated and, like... You walk up to an NPC, and you have this big stream of stuff from them. And then it's like, okay, video game has progressed to, like, phase two. And then it ends. Oh, wait. Can I make it? Yes. And I think maybe after that, honestly, I should do a little bit of a visual rework for things like uh, Jackie's animations. Uh, this is not very good looking. Oh well. I guess I'll fix that now. 
Hang on. <clears throat> I should probably have... God, I'm... If I went to the doctor more than once every, like, 15 years, I would go to the doctor about the fact that, like, I constantly have, like, weird blockages in my throat. Wait, that was not the way that I was supposed to go. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, that's tragic. I hope players have as much fun climbing around as I do. Oh, that was a bad choice. <clears throat> yeah, I literally can't talk. what I could do is I could do Lily's side quest because that gives you an easy way I think it should unlock a way up there actually I think I'll add that as like a, a thing so let's say I'll add to the to-do list Lily continue Lily's quest uh, let's add a sub. I know. Let's let's add a new task. Lily's uh, climbing. <clears throat> That'll be a can ship. B three. Yeah. Junk one thirty seven. Good enough. This is another one where I'm kind of mixed on because I think there's an interesting idea here if, like when you reach that one you have to come back here to restore your stamina but I also don't know if that's like good and this is another one where like you go up here and then you have to get here first and you can't go like you can't do this in a straight shot you have to come back to this little point here and then you can come up here I think in the future, I'll also want to make it easier to determine these subtle differences in slope because, like, they can matter quite a bit. There we go. And then we're up here. And I see another thing where I assume that I've just, like, moved the terrain slightly. Yeah, because it's ever so slightly. 
And Lily, I assume, is floating? No, she's not. Okay, so now what I can do is I'm going to try to fly around this cliff and get up to... So it's sort of like almost a speedrun strat. <laughs> where I'm going to use this little flying glider. And this is fun. I really like this little glider. I think I'm going to do more... I want Lily to be like a recurring character so that you can unlock more places to use this glider from. Like maybe even up from the top of the mountain. Because that would be just so cool, to just fly down the entire world. But okay, so now, instead of flying all the way down... Oh, not a very good spot for her. Oh, well. There we go. Alright, so now I'm where I actually needed to be for this uh, video game. Oh, she has a nice coat. I've never seen a coat with so many colors. Too bad I can't trade with her. So what I can do is I can talk to her here. Of like, uh... Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. There's a bunch of stuff that I- there's a bunch of dialogue that is no longer- like, they're all dead ends. So let's say, like this. So that gives us a little quest. Uh, use journal. Stick trip. Okay, and then, yeah, I should add quest, or like, uh, journals, or whatever it is, dialogue for Somo, to tell her. <laughs> Wait, what is this? What is that? I don't even remember what that is. Like, is there anything up there? Yes, there is. There's a dang little bug up there.
All right, I still have... Why do I still have stamina boosters? Now, oh, well, whatever. I shouldn't use that. I should use this. <clears throat> okay, I should, um... Right, let's let's add that here. So, play tests. Rico, skip of the arena. If you talk to Somo, which you probably actually, I'm pretty sure you have to talk to Somo currently as it is. Like there'd be maybe there's somebody else you can talk to at some point, but I'll figure that out soon. Oh wait, I... I sort of unintentionally roped myself into this. So yeah, soon I'm gonna add uh, fencing up there and then a, a door to block that. So that way it's a bit more like... safe looking. And tragically, I have failed. Hang on. Options audio. Oh, that's terrible. What a terrible score. <clears throat> I think it's because my combo got completely annihilated. Maybe I should make combos a little less important, because right now it's just a straight up multiplier for your score like every time, or for every kill. So I'll I'll rebalance that. Let's put that in the in the thing. So combat arena balance. So combos. So. Okay. Because that was fun. But... What I needed to actually do was use the journal. Go to here. Let's see, and I'm standing, so let's convert my desk back down. All right. So I think he did what I, I think he did what he did. And also, I think I have in here one of the quest things. Let's ch let's change this to like could ship. Bad dialogue and coping fake access indicate back. Or note dialogue guy who opens and closes the blah blah blah. Uh, Let's search for gold. Special dialogue for getting gold. Ah, oh, that's fine. Um, no, what I wanted was... Uh, ability to see the pens if you get gold in one arena event. Because basically I'd like it to be, you know, multiple ways of progressing through these quests because every every individual route is kind of roundabout and like unlikely for a player to find. So my hope is if I have enough of them, the player will get clever once and, uh, you know, get or find a way through it. Because that's sort of my strategy for making sure the player can advance these quests is just... If the way forward is too obscure, just have multiple obscure ways forward, and eventually they'll bumble into one of them. 
and they'll feel like a big old genius when they do. Okay, but now what I can do... So the player will have to notice uh, that skull emblem. Actually, do I have my journal? So this... There's an end... There's an arena down in the caves. Hmm. Wasn't there supposed to be another... This is just a very cool looking area, I think. Uh, some of them janked out a little bit, but uh... I see that one is still just fine. Interesting. It probably just isn't in the group. No, it is. Why is it? Why didn't it fall then? Why do I still have two stamina boosters? Have I not used any of my stamina? Hang on, I need to make... I need to check on something. I have some other time-sensitive obligations today. So I'm sort of juggling both of those. Because... Oh, yes, dead. So yeah, this, this little, like, stretch, like, walk back home, I could probably do with, uh... something a little more elegant here. Or at least more interesting. And I think it's relatively... I think it would be relatively clear to the player that if they want to get out of the caves, they should go to the place that's brighter and goes up. But maybe I should put something like a light source there. I'll do that later. Oh yeah, now we're all the way back down here. Wait, why is she still here? Why is she still here? Hang on. Uh, that's a little... Okay. Isn't she supposed to have, like, a stat that, like, kills her? Ah, I see. I see. What I'm gonna do... What if... I delete her. So, like, what if we have not free flight here? So that way, uh, she's just deleted from here when the free flight is active, and that way there's only one of her at a time. Oh wait, but that's gonna be- that's gonna cause issues, though. Hang on. Uh... Huh. 
Crown game completed. Uh, disconnect game. At the very least, I could change her entry to not be that again. Like, maybe that is what I need? I don't know. My back is sore. That tends to be like the killer when I when I actually do runs. Is just I think I just have a really weak back. But okay, so maybe more stuff here. But this seems to be generally functional. I'll need to do a more full playtest soon. But let's get some of the other things. So indicate these are really important. I don't know how to do that. That'll be later. Area didn't activate when game started. Let's try to figure out what this means. Because I think what I can do is, if it's active... Also, for some reason, this thing, this dang old lantern still doesn't turn on and off properly. Like, when it first starts up, it has the material lit like it's on. But no light. And now we are in an inert dead world. I do like the spooky purple gem. But yeah, I think the next step will be endgame animation rework. Maybe even like a full combat. Well, maybe not, because I could do I could do so many new like so many more things with the combat, but it's also not really the point of the game. So I should just, uh, not do it. Okay. So what I'm seeing is we aren't in the active area. Because none of this active stuff is visible. So that should be pretty easy to solve. Because that means that the, uh, world... Active, update active chunks. So if is active, else cached bounds ch.name. Hmm. And let's do, you know what, let's do um, cached bounds. What should I do? Basically, I want to make sure that in the future, if I ever have active... Well, I don't care. Right now, honestly, this doesn't even work like it should. So I'm just going to not have that. Because the entire point of this active bound stuff, or active cached bounds, was to have... Um, you know, bounds for active entities that are larger. Like, this was originally going to be part of the active entities, so, you know, when the chunk wasn't active, it wasn't going to be shown because it's part of the cave. But I couldn't figure out, because if the player spawns in here, well, it's not there because it's not part of the active entities. So the player was just falling through the world or falling into the bottom of this without it because there's, you know, because it wasn't there. And it didn't know it was supposed to be there, because it didn't know how big the active bounds were going to be. 
but it turns out, yeah, the my active system didn't really work to fix that. So I'll just simplify this back down to this. Let's see. I don't think this is going to fix this. Wait, that coffee is cold. Like, it was already Wendy's coffee, so it's not going to be great. But if it's cold, it's like... Might as well just not drink it. Hmm. So now my question... Wait. No, I have no idea. I thought I I thought I just figured it out, but I don't. I don't have it. Um, junk. One thirty-seven. Let's active. Now, how do I do this? Hmm. World update active chunks. Cached bounds. How you calculate bounds? So let's do like if node dot name equals chunk one thirty seven pass because I'm going to set a breakpoint right there so we can figure out how many children this has. And actually, now that I'm thinking about this. Ah, I see. If the chunk is smaller, hmm. Uh oh. Basically, my problem is this substantially adds to because I just realized it's loading. Wait. No, I, I keep I keep mixing myself up. I keep like trying realizing that I've already thought of you know considered a possibility. Because I, I was thinking, you know, this area. Well, like oh, this part is like not in this chunk, so like why would it be in here? But this is already loaded, so clearly the chunk is being loaded properly, but then it's not being marked active even though this is inside of the active area. But now that I'm saying that, I realized exactly what it is, which is we need to have a new check in here. We do actually need a different uh, active bounds check. But that's going to be right in here. So let's do... Hmm. Chunk content. Now, what do I want? World. Cached bounds. Var. Cached. Active bounds. Or let's do like a, is hashed trying to figure out what exactly I want here.
Okay, I'm thinking chunk loader dot get bounds or something like that. So it's going to be chunk loader. The chunk loader is going to handle this actually. And I think I can actually now calculate the bounds in a separate thread. Because, yeah, now we need chunk loader to have that function get bounds. So it's going to be var bound hash var uh, hash state Start loading chunks, so if we see in chunks, uh, hash state equals uh, hash state dot none. They're active. Are we still? I guess we're. I guess we got a few more songs in the Goodbye Volcano High soundtrack. I have so many things I want to keep track of. Hang on. I need this Firefox little tab here for chat. There we go. Now I have everything I need. Okay. All right, so load low res. So I think what I can do here call deferred add low res name. Wrong thing. So I'm pretty sure, can I instance this here instead of doing this? Like, can I do like node? I don't think I can actually do this, but I would really like to do this because this would mean that if that I, or that I can calculate this bounds once when the game is loaded, because then we'll do var node equals content dot instance calculate bounds content. And then like bounds cache. And cached 
or cash. State. Oh wait, uh... Why did I change the name of that? Okay. So now we need to calculate bounds in here. So this is gonna be... You know, maybe I'll have this in utilities. Because this is useful. need this a little bit higher and this a little bit lower maybe I'm like fiddling with my desk right now cuz I okay there we go and I will ignore that Chunk loader now needs to do calculate bounds. Oh wait, this needs to be node, and this needs to be node. Let's see if that even works first off. Oh wait, no, it won't work because the world I still don't have the function get bounds. So yeah, let's do function get bounds junk spatial return bounds cache junk dot name. What was the output here? I I didn't even check what the debugger said. I'll assume it was related to what I just fixed, but it might not have been. No, it wasn't. Oh, wait. I see it's going to be one of those code changes where I'm just too dumb to go through all of it at once. You know, like before it runs, I'm just going to run it a hundred thousand times with very simple errors. Non-existent function calculate bounds. Oh. Cal cal calculate. Yeah. It's gonna be a little bit, I think, before this is functional. If that's the sort of if those are the sort of errors I'm not catching. Hmm. All oh, right, let's do if. Uh oh. I know if bounds hash. If not chunk name in bounds cache. Or I know if not bounds or cache state. Chunk name Let's do function cache state. 
if is active. Return hash state dot active. So now that I'm looking at that. I think there's actually no way that this will... So, this add content here, this this doesn't need to be here, or whatever it was, add low res. Yeah, none of this is actually going to work. Yeah, so let's do packed scene again. Okay, and then for l content dot instance Okay, there we go. So now it should actually be reasonably uh, uh, not quite, it seems. Hmm. I mean, I guess something I could do is I could just straight up save the cache with the game state, now that I'm thinking about it. Or like this bounds cache, because it's not going to change frequently. Hmm. That, I think, would actually be the right answer here. But okay, first off, what I'm going to do, if... Well, let's do, like, var state equals hash state chunk. If cache state chunk dot name less than state we will then cache it so now it'll check that basically Function declaration cache state conflicts with variable of the same name. Uh, let's get state junk space. chunk.name in bounds hash. I think something wrong has happened there. Hmm. Not working as well as I'd want it to. Okay, what are, what's our git status? Let's do git checkout areas world.
And I do like having the Calculate Bounds in the Util class. So I'll keep that there. And then how let's remove this. And I guess I'll do I guess I'll do hmm. What if we have this as part of the save stuff? So what I'm thinking is, free save objects. So we should have like prepare save, yeah. Global dot set stats like cache or like Well, what if I, hmm. I think I have a, I think I'm gonna have a resource here. Let's see, subchunks, blah, blah, blah. Um. So many things that I have so poorly laid out. So let's do like a new folder like uh, resources. New script. Uh, stems resource function init. It'll have export dictionary bar uh, cache. Resource er hash state dictionary, and then we'll do function uh, enum hash states. Hmm. Active. No, uh, none. Low res. High res. So now what we can do is function. Hmm. Let's go to the chunk loader. Oh, I could have kept that. Oh well. Get bound. So let's do like chunk loader. Well. Hmm. 
Okay, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in here. Bar. Okay. So function has uh no return and uh Okay. So the chunk name is in the bounds cache and the chunk name is in the cache state. That will mean that it is it is here. And we'll do function cache chunk node DB. And then I guess just a state. Wait, no. Uh, cache state, chunk that name equals state. Function get bounds node or chunk node if bounds cache but has chunk return So let's do node and then like state. And now we are in the Night in the Woods soundtrack. There's a lot of brain stuff. Okay, because let's go through pretty slowly. Alright, let's do like get. Uh, what should I do? Let's just do box equals get like chunk loader dot get bounds ch dot or ch. In fact, let's remove this cache entirely.
Uh, we will do chunk loader dot bounds dash. So this way, we'll then get like var state equals get loaded state or get jump state jump. So this is the question now. Get chunk state and chunk node. So if is active chunk return bounds cache dot state active elip is loaded chunk return. State dot inactive else there we go. We'll do uh, bounds cache chunk dot name equals state or er, util dot calculate bounds bound. and then uh, all right, and this will be true then. Actually, I think that might have been this here might have been the actual issue. So let's just make that true by default, and let's make it false here. Because that's going to keep uh, tripping me up. Basically, it does something different with top level and not top level. I, I don't even know what it does. If not top level box, that transform x form box. Um... Interesting. I don't know what that means in this context, or I don't know how that changes anything. Okay, and then we'll return, no, and then hash state chunk.name equals state. Actually, let's do like var old bounds equals. Or if yes, yeah, so that's guaranteed to get me an AABB. If junk dot name in bounds cache. Bounds cache chunk dot name equals new bounds dot merge 
bounds hash chunk dot name else this equals new bounds. So basically it's always gonna be bigger. And then we'll return bounds cache chunk dot name. In fact I could probably just do that here. Like if we just have the if we just have state int if not as chunk state We can just do this. Well, yeah, I'll do it this way. So then this chunk loader does not need to do any of this stuff. It can just do get bounds chunk states. And I don't think there's any use for this. Okay. If we don't have the chunk in chunk bounds, or if the name is not in there and it's not, or, or it's uh, less than or equal to it, you know, whatever that means, then we'll do all this stuff. Get bounds. So I think maybe this will all work. Maybe. Over here. Oh wait. It it seems to work. Wait, actually I have no idea why that like got the environment and everything though. Oh wait, I do know, I think, maybe. No, I don't. Okay, but now let's go to the world. Because what I want to do now is if the chunk has a stat, so global load sync false. So if not blah, 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 then function ready. So before we do any of our pause and load stuff, what we're gonna do is if valid has that bounds cash chunk loader global stat Because now, it shouldn't actually ever need to run this calculate bounds function until I refresh the save file. So this way, we remove another layer of stuttering by just saving it and loading it. Oh, it has stat. So what's our bounce cache? Hmm. Not quite what I was hoping for. Because 
where is this? And why is this? So load nearby chunks, pause and load, ready. So we should have done this, right? Or did I did I put this in the wrong way? Bounds cache. Oh wait, it's because I pressed F8, I'm pretty sure. Let's just run the game. Uh, and I will skip over these for now. Okay, and now if I save and quit, and then we do this, it should properly, like, load it up without having to calculate the bounds again. Oh wait, I should, uh, I failed. I failed my mission, but we got that. So let's get this, because now, almost. Hmm. So what's the state that we need? Three? Oh, wait, hang on. Wait, do we need this cache function? I don't think I've ever used that. But yeah, that's never used. So why is it saving here, then? Wait, wasn't there a control F11? No, shift control F11? There we go. That's our... That's, I, that's the no distractions mode. I was going through the git pull requests and found out that that was a thing that was there. Hmm. Pause and load. Get active chunks. Oh, wait. But I don't need this right now. I actually need the opposite, kind of. Because we need chunk from the local functions, which I don't think I can get here. Oh, wait. I can. Okay. Chunk cave 137. So then if we go to the bounds cache here. Chunk cave 137. Uh, cache state, chunk cave 137. Two. I guess... Well, I guess what I should figure out. Is there any way that I've been... I'm saving something that's less than... The correct value. So let's go back to the chunk. Let's go back to the bounds cache. Cache state. Let's see if that assertion holds because it should like there should never be an instance where it's writing a less up-to-date thing there all right so that looks good and we'll ignore this for now i'll like i'll tolerate whatever it's doing because now there should be this active cache in here and we'll save and quit Now, even, we can get some really cool stuff. Well, I don't know. I guess it's fine. I fixed the bug. Comet arena indicate back them up. NPCs that explain more about the area. Shortcuts to reduce backtracking. What were the... I forgot what the actual things that I wanted to change were there. 
but I can at least do the more stuff in the base instance because there needs to be lighting. There needs to be what I think there needs to be is a um, let's go here arena like base scenario or something. And this will just be called like a what will it be called? Hmm. Remove child. So let's do um or C dot name. And then let's do our end function. We'll uh, activate a base scenario of like, uh, what should it do? Probably clear scenarios and then set it to one of them. Okay, so now I can have a light here. Because the main thing I wanted was... Thank you for putting it all the way down here, Godot. Where is my base? There we are. Let's see my actual, like, what does this look like in here? Yeah, there we go. Because I want the standard, like, whatever this is, to have some lighting. Let's do, like, a little bit of a pinkish color, and then maybe a little bit of a, like, orangish color. These will both have... I know, this will have a distance visible. Uh, you know what? No. So what's this thing? I'll make this be like... 80. There we go. So this way it's not so flat in here. And hopefully this all works. And let's add like a... Uh... That's not what I want. That's definitely not what I want. I'll put one of these and like a couple guys down here. Why are they all screwed up? Like why are they like arranged in like such weird places? I drag it and I drop it and he's on the ground. It's not on the ground. Why is he not on the ground? Sit on the ground, you guy. Why is it so fucked up? Just put him on the ground. Please, thank you. I, I, I love drag and drop when it drags and drops instead of not dragging and dropping. So, like, is this guy gonna go on the floor? He is not going to. Okay, and this way, 
We're gonna have a few of these. Arena. Okay, somewhere in here. And look, he is on the ground now. That's good. Yeah, I'll need a door here. Let's get that going in here. It'll be like, uh... Right here. Damn, this is never gonna get to- this is never gonna s hit level ground, is it? I don't think there is any level ground in this place. Good enough. Okay. So this is gonna be another one where it's gonna go like... ...that. I guess this one doesn't need to be as big as the other ones. Because this is going to be like, uh... Yeah, right here. Well... Oh, okay. This has to be a lot shorter, actually. I don't I don't know how this isn't working like there's something it's like skewed in a weird way ah well whatever shade it smooth bevel it with uh I mean we could do hard normals I prefer it like this, because it makes it more fucked up and weird looking. Okay, this is now... Uh... Oh wait, this is like...
Uh, there we go. And that's officially good enough. There we go. Ta-da! We now have a pathway that actually goes up to here, and I'll eventually have uh, things that block it, and it'll uh, be cool. And then we can have a... Uh, 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 entry version. Let's say there's a little bit of give here. Well, yeah. Good. Let's do Eh I won't I won't do it that way. Thank you. There we go. And then let's get a uh, UV editor.
and I think I think this will look about right. And then what I'll do is get this. Assign that material slot to smooth. I'll get I'll just get a big old fence here. this For some reason, something that came to mind was, um, oh, I forget who I was even watching. Someone was playing the, um, there was, uh, an Aqua Teen Hunger Force golfing game. And during the tutorial, Frylock is like, oh, you better be having fun. This is the whole game. This is the whole, this is what you do the whole game. And it was just really funny. But yeah, that, that has basically nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Do I know what to do with this one? I'll try this again. What I'm gonna do selection. So let's get my uh, where is that? This one. And then I guess we'll skin this. This is a little bit of a... well, I don't know, it looks kind of nice. Let's apply this. Ooh, ooh. I did not know that this was, uh, what it did. Hang on. Let's add modifier decimate planar. Apply that much better. So I wonder... I don't think... Nah, I just, I just have to select these manually. Well, do I even... What if I just did... What if I just... Uh, 
merge these together. Get this. Add mono. No. Uh, this. And was there anything else that I wanted to do? Because I could add some base scenario stuff. Oh yeah, a door. That'll be useful here. And I guess I should do it the same way that I did the other one, where I have, like, this. And then, like... Something like, uh, this. There we go. That's going to be good enough, I think. So maybe I'll make this a little bit more rickety and, like, irregular. Because this is meant to be, like, scrap metal that they've basically, like, put together to make this little pathway. Ah, well. That seems pretty good. Oh, wait. I know what I should do. Ah, this is going to be... Uh, follow along active quads? Huh. That actually worked. I'm astonished. And this one's going to be very big. This should be stopped now. Hang on, I'm gonna turn on a light. Okay. Collision 9, and then, what do these, oh wait, no, not this one. I think it's, what was it again? I'll just have to look at this dang old little thing. Collision 5, 2, 4. That's the famous book, Fahrenheit 5, 2, 4, as they say. Okay. Hmm. 
Oh, what I should have done. Added the little things here. Sticking up. Because that makes more sense than just having, like, fences, like, fused to the wall. Oh, well. little thing. I forgot to add the door. So this will be upper entry. Upper door. No, kinematic. And I think this is just about the right height, because this is a two meter tall cube. So yeah, about two and a half meters is exactly where I want, more or less. You know, just a little bit, you know, so it's a little bit shorter than a door normally would be. I'm just going to do this. So it's going to do the same thing that the other one did. Yeah, that looks good enough. It'll stink right up in there. This one will be the opposite of the um, of the other ones, where it'll be open by default, and it'll close whenever the tournament is active. So I'll do that right in. Um, ooh, this could actually be tricky to figure out. Well, no, no, it won't be that bad. I'll just have it not hooked up to the stats because I was thinking if the player open or if the player starts the game and then they uh, start a tournament and then they exit during the tournament, I'm trying to figure out will that soft lock the player by locking the door, but I can just make it so that it doesn't persist with the save. So that way, like, uh, how's this going to go? So that way it just doesn't affect doesn't get affected by it. Let's get this door in here. So let's do um, let's just lock this in place animation new activate
Is this a line? I don't think this is aligned properly. Oh, well, I'll just have it like... Well... Why is this not aligned? Like, they align decently well here. Well... Do they actually... I guess if I just don't, like, mash them together so much. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Collision, or, uh, transform. And this will have the opposite thing where, uh... And I guess the door should have been the opposite way, because... That's the way that people would want... Like, this is the way that the creatures are going to be banging on the door to get out. Oh well. It's just a safety issue that they're having. And this will have the same thing that this other one has where it slightly overshoots it. And then it'll slightly overshoot it again. Well, nah, I don't think it will. It'll do like a, uh, like this. I think actually, what I want here. Let's get it like right there. And then I'll slap this in. Get this up. Get this down. Maybe not so aggressively. That seems neat. And then... And it doesn't look so believable the opposite way, but that's okay. Okay, so this door... Let's add power to it at some point. So that'll be with, well, let's do like signals for the games. signal so where's our lovely doors oh uh, not that on activated And then we're going to do a clear power for this one. Because that way, if there's any issue where the player somehow mul starts the game multiple times without ending it, it's just going to... It's just going to clear it. Alright, let's see if that works. So... What, it, what this means now is, if I just run into this area, this door will be open, I think. Uh, let's no clip out of here. Right, because the player... Yeah, so I need to... Let's add that to the to-do list. 
uh, make it so the player doesn't get instantly soft locked or like need to request a rescue if they uh let's see don't make the player get stuck in the uh, spawn area. And that's going to be lower priority because that's, like, because the player can ask for rescue, so it could function as basically a tutorial for that, but it's not a very good tutorial. That's more just a trap that the player can get themselves out of. Uh, is this... Oh yeah, this door's active. Okay, that's good. And yeah, now I can put, like, people up here cheering us on and having a good old dang old time. Oh, you can just... Hmm. The fences are a little bit low. I mean, there's a lot of clearance here. Oh, I see that that still isn't working. Oh, well. Okay. Well, I've done... I've tested whatever... No, wait, no. I didn't quite test everything I wanted to test. I wanted to make sure that there weren't different... Because now, this isn't tied to the save. So I need to just make sure that when you start an arena match it closes the door, and when you stop it, it uh, doesn't, or it opens again. Maybe I should have another Jericho, or somebody else who can start the arena for you. Okay, look at that. It's all closed up. Um, I should not. Let's exit the minigame. There we go. Hey, look at that, the base scenario works. Oh wait, did this not spawn though? I think, okay. That's the first thing that I'll need to do. Which is, uh, if... Let's do arena. So if... Okay, so base is not an arena scenario, so it should not be removed. Let's try this again. Because I didn't even think about that when I added that. This And also, it feels like things just get bigger. Like, everything just always is getting bigger and bigger. Like, is this- this thing was not that big before. It- I swear it was not that big. This thing looks enormous. Was it seriously this big? It looks... it just looks wrong. Oh, the game crashed. It really does not like when I edit things anymore, which is super unfortunate. Because uh, editing things is kind of important. And I figured out, I'm pretty sure it's because of the background threads, but... This feels so much bigger. Hang on. Let's teleport. What was it? A one... No, 74... Is where one of these is in the wild. Was it really that big?
And also, I still need to do so much more with this place. It, yeah, it was this big. It just looks so much... It just looks so much smaller in this area. Oh, wait. This isn't marked as water, is it? Hmm. I'll have to figure out what I want to do with that, because I'd like the player to, you know, walk around like this is water instead of not. I'll just put that in the to-do list, actually. To-do... Um, make sure fountain water behaves as water. Lower priority, but... Bug visual B3. Okay, did I put the stuff that I wanted to put in here? Uh, indicate NPCs to explain more about the area, shortcuts to reduce backtracking. I did not do anything that I was supposed to be doing here. Don't mention Byro's name unless you've talked to him. Skip explanation of the area if you've talked to Somo. I'll do that, I guess. Let's save and quit here. So this is going to be... Area 137 slash escape. Uh, stats. And I use the phrase incredibly dangerous too many times here. So I'll just do that. And then... So yeah, now, essentially, her misconception is she imagines them as sort of like some sort of like hunting pens. Like, because there are sometimes things where basically deer are like just standing there and you just shoot him with a gun, and that's like, you like pay to do that. But no, you're like getting thrown right in the middle of it. It's not like a, you know, some sort of, I don't know, commercialized hunting thing. It's like you are in the middle of it. So let's put like uh I think I have some funny ideas. Let's put arena well not in zone arena. Let's go drinks drink fridge. Is this oh th this thing's fucking broken. Everything's broken, nothing works anymore. Like every single goddamn little like every time I put down a prop, it's broken now. The materials are broken. Like, and let me guess. Oh, wait, no. Okay, so the... The materials, at least, are here. So material... Albedo... No, wait, no. I need main spatial, and then albedo drink fridge. Because I really wish there was some, like, project config that I could set up of, like, this is my main material. Because, like, it feels like custom shaders were, like, an obligatory... like, red-headed stepchild of a feature. Like, the fact that baked lighting doesn't incorporate them. I mean, now in Godot 4 it does, but... Yeah, in Godot 3, I think it was just... 
There were a lot of things in Godot 3 that are sort of just half measures, like half implemented, I think. Let's see. My shift button wasn't working. Yeah, I have. This is the first time I've ever multitasked while uh, streaming, and I think, ideally, it would be my last. But if I'm going to be streaming so much on the weekends, it probably won't be. Because, yeah, my plan is to work about 20 hours a week on the game, and about 16 of those will be streamed on weekends of, like, uh, you know, just out here. And then let's do, let's do, like, carpet. I guess... Can I please control A? Control A. Control A. Spatial. Like, I don't know, uh, audience. So this way, I can have a more convenient thing, because otherwise I have to scroll all the way up to here to select this thing to actually parent stuff. Okay. Uh... Hello. There's just so many... Like, why can't it... Like... Okay. Now drag and drop works. I had to politely ask it. I had to re I had to remind it, you know, of what it once was, essentially. And now we can have these little pillows here. And we can have people sitting around and enjoying their uh, their delicious little drinks. And they'll be, you know, they'll be drinking their like bottled milk. It's not what I want. I want this. And then what else do I want? This little stump table and like a lamp. Eventually, I'll have to add wiring for all of this if I want it to feel a little bit more believable. Let's do like a offer table. No, a C table. Let's do NPCs. And I guess they'll all be sitting. This guy will be like standing here enjoying his little drink. And eventually I should rename all these guys to like spectator or something. Actually. So where are these NPCs, though? They seem to be... Oh, okay, they're here. Uh, arena worker, I'll say. And so they get out of dodge when a... Oh wait, no, these guys should not be in the pen, or should not be in this base arena. 
they'll be here. So this is going to be pens. That's not what I want. This is what I want. Enter uh, zone arena pens area. Now I can grab all these, put them up here. And then I get these two guys, shove them in here. So now, ta da! much more manageable little chunks of world for me to play with. Alright, good. Actually, what do I want for... So, I have this. Which I should show. So where do I need that? I need that here. So that way I can just have that edited. Let's actually add some like stuff into here as well. I should also make sure that the uh, the NPCs don't spawn in problematic areas. They seem fine. There'll be one that just pops down from here. I think I need, uh, what if we put some of these, like, up here, just, like, sticking out of the wall so that the player can get higher and, like, hit things? I don't know how feasible this is going to be, so this will be fun to try out.
Oh, it's, I know what it is. It's colliding with the water, even though it's invisible. Right, because it, it does it does some weird thing with like the physics. Instead of uh, instead of drag and drop like reading the depth buffer or something, it's like uh, yeah, it does some weird physics query stuff, which I'm not a fan of. I think it would be better to just uh, well, then it couldn't preview it because you know that would be overriding the depth buffer. But I think that'd probably be like the ideal way to do it. Let's get this guy up here. Oh. So eventually I think the right choice would be to make it so that there's an, a stationary enemy eventually up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. But okay. That was a fun little sidetrack with playing with that some more. Oh wait, why are these... Oh, all of this is swans. Should be there. Okay. And also, I can play with these lights a little bit more. I think these guys should have, like, pistols here, but I don't want to do that right now. Because then I might have to, like, have the player... Or then I might have to explain why the player can't pick up the pistols there. <clears throat> okay. That's good. And eventually they'll avoid the water, which will be cool. note dialogue to help the player with characters indicate the back of the cave more aggressively so that's in here so yeah I should probably do like um, what if I get right in here Omnilite negative Because the way these work, or the way that I've set them up to work is pretty interesting. Because they don't have direction with my base material. Instead, they use, um, let's change this to a spotlight. So they work more like shadows. Because originally I was going to use them for like, uh, basically like I'm doing now, like altering entire volumes of the area. But I wound up doing basically uh, just using them for drop shadows almost exclusively. Okay, so this should be pretty comfortably not in there. I think what I should do Let's see does this work well enough I think so and then let's make this not this but like uh, I guess like a reddish color make it a little bit less energy or like a... something like that you know I just want it to be more obvious to the player that there's something beyond this point
Oh wait, the entire point of that was to make sure that it uh, looked fine. Alright, so... I think it's still pretty easy to miss. So, well... No, if I come, if I came down here, and I was like, okay, is there something off here? I would first, my, my eyes are drawn to there, because it's a dark cave and there's stuff that clearly stacks into it. I guess I could be a little bit more, and I could put a bug down, like back here. Now I'm, I might as well do that. Just a little carrot for the player. And I can make these guys. So these are going to be the pen guards. Uh, eventually. So let's make them have dialogue. Let's do like a... Not global task, it's complete unwanted visitors. Or I know, global task. Actually, that's an important thing here. Well, no. Okay, so that works. Global task is active, unwanted visitors. So this is going to be the pen guard. this well how do I want to do this I think it should be this You know what, let's just have it like this for now. Because basically, well... Yeah, let's do that, and then... There we go. Let's just say these are both going to be here.
Oh wait, where's my quotations? Because I use actual, like, proper quote characters, but I don't know how to input them. Hang on, I'm gonna try... Windows input Unicode. Because I know you can press... You can hold Alt and then mash... Or press on the numpad. Let's see, common symbol character codes. Legal fractions, we need our start, I don't want neutral quote, I want a uh, start and end quote. Type the character code, press Alt, and then type, press X. Hmm. I thought it was that you could press 
I thought it was that you could hold. Uh, let's do symbols and punctuation. Rotational symbols, punctuation, general punctuation. Two zero zero C or two oh one C. Now I need to convert to uh, from Unicode or from hexadecimal to decimal. That's going to be fun. Oh wait, can I actually receive the correct code with the text U plus? Hmm. 1B5 Alt X. Alright, 201C Alt X. Let's try that. That didn't work. Can I hold Alt 201 C? That did not work either. Okay. All I want is to be able to type type uh, quotation characters. Okay, let's see if I can figure out how to get where to get quote characters. And it should be somewhere in here. Because there's this one, modifier letter double apostrophe. That's not what I want. Okay, I'm just gonna look up. Hang on, where's my where's my thing? I'm sure I have it somewhere. Or just intro Armstrong. There we go. I got it. I found it. Let's not name this quotes.dialog. There we go. So now I have quote characters ready to go. There a question mark there. Okay. So that gives us that. And because the task is complete, they should just tell us hello. So let's do guard. So this one will be guard one. And 
this one. Movie Guard 2. And that gets us uh, a little bit of the quest stuff. Indicate that more aggressively. More note dialogue to help the player for other characters. Oh yeah, that was uh, like, what if they do that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower the priority of that. NPCs that explain more about the area. Is there... Uh... Let's just get these NPCs. These three guys will all have the same name, I guess. Well... I'll just have one thing. I don't care. This will be arena worker dialogue. Wait, hang on. This should have, um, this should be closed whenever the enemy, or whenever the, uh, the games are not active. Or whenever the games are active, I should say. Do I have that set up properly? I think I'm not going to have this track this stat, and instead I'm going to do, uh, have this guy as a child of the, um, well, no, I won't do that. Do they have custom signals? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I know what I'll do. Let's have a function called reset power. Uh, let's do... Uh...
Well, why do I have open stat if I... This is... Hmm. Oh, well, I don't get it. I'll just, I'll just have that there anyway. So now what I can do is when the games start, it'll clear the power of this door no matter what. So yeah, game start. Uh, clear power. Where is that? So many dang things. And actually, I could also even have that for this one now. You know what? I will have it for that one, even. So they close all of the doors when that happens, and then... We reset... Oh, wait, no. Oh, yes, that's correct. But this needs to be here. Disconnect. Wait, then what the hell did I do? Oh, wait, no, I... That, okay, that was set up correct. I'm just, like, losing my mind now. Because I did that one the opposite of these ones. That was door upper. And that was clear power. Because that one's flipped around compared to these ones. Okay, so then I connect this to the other ones. So that's going to be door entry, reset power. And then the door for the pen. Oh. Door for the pens. Reset power. Okay, so now all three of them are set up so that they close when the game starts and they open when the games end. Or go back to whatever state they were in before the game end or before the game started. And now we can see if that actually works. Uh, 137 clip. So yeah, all these little doors are open. And I'll just fight some crawlers. What? Why am I here? What a ripoff. Why did I- why did that happen? Can't add child base to arena. Already has parent arena. Um... Oh, it's because clear scenarios should do that. So let's do, um... And then here at end we should do uh I guess just might as well do true. Okay. And also the Hang on, I'm going to test Ag. I don't care. Alright, are the doors closed? That one's closed. That one's closed. Let's even check up here. Even though I don't need to check up here, because 
player's never going to see this, but as a little detail, this outer door also closes when the arena is busy. Now I'll see if I can get a good rank. I think this is a little bit... I've mentioned before, this is a little bit too good of a strategy. Because I can instantly cancel out of this uh, uppercut into a dive, and that does like twice as much damage. Oh, that sucked. That was a terrible score. And also, we should do a fade to black there. Let's do, um... Because now that the entire scenario, like, the, the entire world, like, clears away, we should do, um... Well, what do I want to do? I don't know. Let's make sure the doors are open. Yeah, they're open again. And then let's do, uh, scenario text rank, uh, where is Lily's game? Fade in. Let's do that. So, arena, award name, completed, no, end. Player.fade. Back to standing. Let's see. Let's do... Let's try this again, so that way I can see this, uh, how this feels with all this stuff in here. Because I don't know if these will really, like, help us. Yeah, I think, I think that just makes it harder. Especially for a player without a pistol. Oh yeah, they're in a... yep, they're in a battle to the death now. So now we have to patiently wait for them. Yeah, I think for these ones especially... Are, they're just gonna be really, really hard to do. Because these guys are so hard to actually, like, kill quickly. But I do like, I like the idea of this, where as much of the challenge is actually getting to the enemies quickly by, like, platforming to them to preserve your combo, rather than just, like, an onslaught of enemies to fight. Let's try this again, but this time I want to be right up here because I want to see this door open. Yeah, this is sort of the like degenerate strategy that you can do, just mashing square over and over once you get into this loop.
So I should probably do something to significantly reduce the player's ability to do that. Um, are there enemies somewhere that was not ideal? But oh, well. oh yeah, I forgot that I was going to test this, but oh well. The doors open and close. They do what they do. they do what they're supposed to do. It seems like it works pretty well. All right, so let's save and quit there. Do I have the people who I want to have? Because I think for now, I think for now that gives me what I want there. Shortcuts to reduce backtracking. That's going to be a complicated one. That's also going to be a really important one because I don't like how much backtracking the player has to do. I can do it with, in part, I can do it with Lily. So let's go up to 137, the real deal, and 138 maybe? So like maybe once we get here, hmm. Maybe I can just have like a, like stamina ups or stamina boosters or something. And someday I need a better management system for my NPCs. Because Currently, it's possible to have this character here and up in uh, 138 at the same time. And I can't really do cross-chunk travel very easily, because these are just distinct scenes that happen to have a similar NPC in them. But okay. Um... Really, the more practical way would be to hoist this directly up this way, but I guess that would be... Uh, because then you would have to go this way, which, uh, I mean, I think that would actually be easier, but I don't care. This is more fun. Okay, so that doesn't seem like it's going to help me very much. What are some ways that we can get through this area quicker? I think if there were a path from here to here... That could help, but that could also confuse the player. If there were a way to quickly get from up here down into the arena... Maybe, like, I could have something in here that you could go down? Hmm... And I guess another thing I could do, I'm not married to the position of Byro. I could put him somewhere else. Because I haven't made his form yet. Is, is the game going to go? There it is. Because like right now he's right here. And we need a way to quickly get up this way from his house. So maybe... I have been saying that I would like to make a ladder object. 
So you know what, I'll test that right here. Because maybe I can just, like, get, like, a rope ladder from a character. Put it down right here. Climb all the way up here. And then we have a much more direct way up to here. And then I'll figure out some way of making that fun. So let's see, where do I want to put that, though? Hut area? Yeah, I'll put it in hut area. Let's do... CSG. Locks. Use collision. Collision layer 9. And for now... Test ladder. And we'll do group ladder. And I also need a group for stairs, so that way eventually I can have them. Alright, let's get a player. Because the other thing I wanted was the ability to walk up any slope, because sometimes stairs are steeper than the, uh, like the 45 degree angle or whatever it is that I register as climbing. And I want to make it simple on myself by just, uh, declaring that they're fine to walk on. But okay, let's do brain stamina. If best floor not in group ladder okay And then eventually I can have it so that the player just kicks down a ladder of some sort, or like a rope ladder. Which kind of begs the question as to why, like, Lily didn't just give you a big old rope ladder, but who knows. Maybe she just didn't have a rope ladder. Maybe they're expensive, I know. Maybe Byro gives you a rope ladder. Like as part of this. Alright, so let's see if this works. Not quite, I don't think. So if not best floor dot is in group. If not best floor. Or Hmm. Why is that so weird? Why is that so, like, bizarre? Did I... Maybe I scaled it instead of, uh... Grabbing the ends of it? No, this seems fine. Yeah, why is... What's the deal with that? Okay, let's just, let's just, uh, go back to the player, close other tabs, which will fuck up my scrolling, of course, which is very useful. Oh, wait, no, it didn't. That's weird. If false and best floor or. Okay, let's just... I don't understand what's happening with this thing. It seems like it's it seems like its problems are actually just completely unrelated to being some I know what it is. It's because it's a really, really long polygon. And Godot or bullet physics does not like really, really long polygons. So I should probably just make it wider for this test, and then when I make the actual thing, it can't be a single polygon that's this long. Yeah. 
Yeah, so let's ignore that for this. And let's just make this really wide. Like, whoop. Whoop. And I can make this shorter, because I can just, you know, move this to the actual place where it should be. And hopefully this is thick enough that it won't screw up. Yeah. And now you can see the stamina is not draining. It's not going up either, but it's not going down. So now this gives me immense amounts of power. Because I can just climb anywhere, as long as I've deigned to fit in the level design. So now I just... Oh, that gave me like an actual sense of vertigo somehow. Okay, so I'll have some interest, more interesting little cliffs and then we'll just like kick down a, a ladder to climb up there once we get up here. Let's get uh, some stuff in here, I guess. Let's get some rocks. Well, I guess I should probably plot out Byro's little farm now. Yeah, I guess I'll do that. That's the right thing to do. So let's close... Well, not, not close that. Let's commit all my stuff. Some dialogue to patch things together and um, better bounding volume caching. Because now it'll actually properly cache things, which is pretty cool. In fact, I bet you that would mean that I could make this little mesh part of the active areas now because basically the player would come into this area like organically through the caves that would trigger the active load and then when they move again it'll trigger the um, it'll recache the bounding volume computing it with all of this stuff and that could work i should probably have some sort of like depth limit you know what? That's another thing I'm going to do. Let's do top level. Calculate bounds. Max depth equals six, maybe? And we'll do like a... If max depth greater than... Uh, zero. False and max depth minus one. So that way, it should also be significantly faster because most of the actual com computation would be in all of the tiny little things, but like if we go up to here again, I think it should be generally, like, if this is one, two, no, it'd be like, 
the cave itself, or the chunk, then the dynamic entities, then the active entities. So one, two, three, four. So that this would be like in the fourth layer of this. Four, and then like five. So this would be getting like rocks and stuff here. So yeah, I think in general, this will give me what I want, probably. That does mean I have to be more careful about, uh... Well, I guess, I guess if it doesn't work, I could always just increase the depth more. And hopefully it'd be at an appropriate level soon, or at some point. Okay, but whatever. None of that is what I'm supposed to be doing. What I'm supposed to be doing is in Blender. World. And I know Byro's farm is in here somewhere. I think I put it in here, but I think it should actually be higher priority. Where's Byro? Uh, the spring and farm. That's going to be a won't ship. Skip explanation of the arena if you've talked to Somo. Did I do that already? I'm pretty sure I did. Oh yeah, I did. That was pretty early. Skull tablet. Don't mention Byro's name unless you've talked to him. I'll do that one as well, while I'm here. Uh, let's do... Stat... Off to slash Byro. And that should work. Shortcuts to reduce backtracking the spring and farm. So yeah, the spring and farm should come first, then the shortcuts. And that should cut down on a lot of the uh, tedium here. Oh wait, hang on. I have a good idea. Unapply all of the viewport visibility modifiers. Because otherwise, this is going to get messy real fast. Okay. And this is already going to get pretty messy and ugly and weird and hairy and other adjectives for bad. Because basically, I need to figure out how to put a farm here. Why is it not, why is it not connecting properly? Oh wait, okay, I see. So there's going to be a lovely little garden area in here. Because originally the old shortcut was you would blow up the tower up here and it would slide down this way, which has now uh, no longer an option because that was a stupid idea. Okay, and let's pull this one up. I 
let's do like sharp. Let's make this high enough that the player can't just, like, hop, skip, and jump up here. Uh, maybe not in, like, a such a screwed up way, though. Let's see, and I guess... Oh. My beautiful things disappeared. Okay. Let's do, like, a little bit more here, then. Now we have, and this looks a little bit more cool, a little bit more interesting, I think. And these will be uh, farms, or like little farm land, I guess, for Byro. And then, what should I do? So I want this here, I guess, will be where the rope ladder is. And is there anything else I want here? I think eventually this cliff face will be cooler. And also I should like unmangle this part of this mountain. Because eons ago, I designed it and it was completely fucked up. And I think maybe there should be a way to get up the mountain from this side, but I'll figure that out at some point soon. Oh. Hang on. There we go. Something happened here. There we go. Yeah, I keep saying one of the advantages of making this just a mesh is that I can make the edges, or I can just add geometry. I don't have to worry about, you know, completely screwing up a, uh, a whatever it is, height map, a height plane or whatever. Though, admittedly, that means that it's now my responsibility to make sure the geometry is actually good. And it tends to not be very good. Like here. I could do a lot to make this look better. But oh well. I think eventually what I'll do is try to figure out a nice way of, like, adding a decimate 
like a planar decimate or something. Oop, not quite what I wanted to do. Let's get my demo thing. And now let's get one of these. I thought I accidentally hit apply all and I was like, oh god. But okay. So this will completely screw up Byro's area, but there's basically nothing interesting in there anyway, so that's fine. And then I'll need to figure out how to get the, um... How to make... What am I going to make? A rope ladder. And how to make it, like, deployable. Because basically... Let's close all these. And I'm sitting back down. Well, I don't know. It's not that bad. Well, I guess. Okay, so there is stuff here that I'm going to have to... Yeah, let's just push, push all of this up. That worked pretty well. Because Byro's hut is going to be big and beautiful. Yeah, so I guess, honestly, all you would... Ah, okay. So all you would need is a rope ladder from here to here. And you you have now a way of getting up to this place. Or this to this, uh, what have you. And let's get these rocks in here somewhere. And that also will help this village be more practical, because now there's like a, a source of food and a source of employment for people in this area. And let's make sure 113 has lost nothing of interest. Yeah, that seems basically as it was. And then we'll go to 112. Because I don't think this changed very much, but it might have. Yeah, that seems basically the same. Oh. Right, um... Let's make sure I can actually get up this thing still. Yeah, this at least makes this cliff a little bit more striking and interesting, so that's nice. Because I should also look at more reference images of the American Southwest, because that was the original source of uh, inspiration for the Red Desert here. So I should look at more plateaus and cool rocks and things. Yeah, because, yeah, looking at this, also, I should keep in mind... Hang on, I'm going to lower the volume of this one. Or, actually, I'll just skip that one. Here's my chat window. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, I need my... There's so many things to manage. Okay. I should keep in mind that because this isn't a height map, that gives me advantages that most other, like, terrain systems don't have. Like, the fact that I can just have really big, sheer cliffs like this is, like, not a common thing. So I should be taking advantage of that much more by, like, you know, 
less rolling hills and gent like gently rolling hills like these and more like crazy harsh cliffs and stuff and like you know vertical and super vertical and above vertical and pulling and twisting the geometry however I want it let's see I'm gonna I'll probably level oh oh there's a there's an occlusion plane there okay let's go back to the world then maybe I should just keep off of the these occlusion planes for a little while before I you know once I've actually like figured out what the terrain is gonna look like here well I'll just I'll just push it well not that Occluder, 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 occluder. Eventually. Maybe in here? These occluders do not like to be selected. Probably because they don't have any physics on them. There we go. Okay. And that looks good. And who doesn't love a little pile of rocks to jump on? Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how to get up here. I mean, I have stamina booster, so I'll probably just use those. Yeah. Just dipping into those a tiny bit. Yeah, so if the player can get up to there, I should put a rope ladder there. And that'll be their little shortcut. Because, yeah, these are eviscerated instantly. And this, eventually, I should add a custom animation, so I'll, I'll just put that in here. Custom animation for climbing ladders. Animation and sound. Climbing ladders. Eh, I'll do can't ship, it would be ashamed. That'll be, uh, animation, sound. Yeah, good enough. Okay. So let's also do up in these plateaus. Vertex paint. Oh, I can only do one at a time, right? That sucks. Because this is right at the border of like, I want to be doing, ooh, ooh. Power of the PS5 right there, hang on. It was like, there's like one frame per eight seconds. Okay, object mode. A. Viewport viz. Vertex paint. I wonder if I can vertex paint multiple meshes. So let's do blender vertex paint multiple meshes. Because I simply think I can't. Yep, you can just you just have to combine them into multiple meshes. Or combine them into one mesh and then like split them up, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk that, because there's like modifiers and stuff that could be completely disastrous. Okay, but let's get a little bit of fanciness. So also, can I do a material preview here? I should have the vertex color, I think, affect the material preview. Can I maybe, like, get this, like, not so glacially slow? Like, I don't even know why it's so slow. 
because I don't have any modifiers active now. Because, like, look at that. I think that's, what, two frames a second? people with resting heart rates faster than this is updating. I could probably go into the blend file and with a hex editor and edit it by hand faster than it's doing it. And my throat is still dying. Interesting. Interesting interpretation of reality here. Oh wait, no. This is, uh, that was weight paint. Okay. Because I was doing the groups and stuff. All right. So let's just ignore that. Let's do material preview. Let's change this material to be, uh, use notes. Shader editor. Input color attribute. Uh, let's try this. That didn't work. Uh, vertex? color um but is this like what is this oh that okay maybe does it work how do i just get the vertex color blender Okay, um, how do I use vertex weight? I don't want vertex weight, I want vertex color. To color attributes as well, alpha. The target color attribute. Uh, <clears throat> I can't, I look. Color attributes, color. Base corner, white color. So base color is here, and then if I did render, okay, that doesn't do anything because it's there's no lighting. But why then is this not working? I I say I said it's it's right here, it's right in here. This is the I'm using the nodes. Do I press the button to use the nodes, or do I press the button to not use the nodes? I do not understand how this works. So, like, does this mean that I use the nodes? Okay, now I'm using the nodes. I press... Okay. And I prefer a color ramp from, uh, let's do, like, a... color let's do like a 
Let's just do a color ramp here. And we'll do separate color. Uh, here, do like a reddish color, and then here we'll do like a greenish color. Okay, there we go. After many trials and tribulations, I can now paint, maybe. There we go. And this way, they'll be reasonably close together. Oh wait, but I didn't have 100% color, or 100% strength. I'll just do 100% now. Actually, now that I think about it, if I just grab all of these vertices, how do I, hang on, how, how do, how do I go the wireframe mode again? Why is... Why is... Oh, it's because... Okay. Thank you for the C button. I, I was scared for a second. Thank you for disabling literally all input when I'm in this mode, Blender. That's... Like, I'm worried that when I press Z, I'll accidentally use the Z button instead of, you know, staying... Instead of it doing nothing. Which is what I was intending for it to do. Thank you, Blender. Okay. Now if I go to Vertex Paint, Drift K, and if I do uh, Z Solid C Preview, oh, I did the wrong thing. Vertex Paint, do this, Shift K, there we go, and then, wrong button. Okay, now we have this, and it works pretty well. Hang on, I need to, uh, very, very slowly get this working. What baffles me is how slow just painting is here, even though, like, there's not really anything different about this. But oh well. Let's see, so where else would I want a little bit of green? Let's do like up here and like uh, in these corners a little bit. So you know, there's just a little bit of there's just a little bit of green in here. And this is going to be... wait, paint? No. Vertex paint. That. Shift K. Object mode.
Oh wait, no, I'm gonna do, let's do like half strength. How did these, I guess that makes sense. Okay, let's just get the modifiers back in here. See how that works. Because <clears throat> these modifiers should actually apply the uh, colors. They did not. I swear they were supposed to. Oh, it's because, okay. There we go. Ta-da. Now it's kind of obvious that, uh... Oh god. I just realized my mistake here. Vertex paint. And then I do shift K. Oh, it's gonna die. Nope. Okay, so I've pressed shift K. And now it looks decent. Ta da! So now we have little bits of green everywhere, probably. Unless it just blends into gray. Which I guess would be fine as well. Let's see how this looks in-game. Let's see this in action. Act is dying. <sighs> I think it'll be good for me to get some exercise once this is done. But I do think it's feasible for me to do eight hours of this a day. Oh yeah, I'm still here. Uh, let's do... Hmm... 
You know, I think this might be a little much. But let's see what it looks like with the other. Yeah, this is a little, this is a lot of green. It kind of goes against the spirit of an impoverished de uh, desert province. Well, I guess it could still be... Let's see, wasn't there supposed to be, like, green here? Maybe it's just very subtle. Yeah, it seems like I it seems like it doesn't impact. Oh wait. No, it's weird. I think it's just a little bit hang on. Let's something strange going on with this coloration. Because I don't think it actually affected it as much as I was expecting it to. Yeah, and it affected that a little too much, I think. Uh hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if I can get... If I can, like... Vertex paint. Uh, if I, instead of trying to set the vertices... The color exactly. Can I do a, like, point four? And then like swap, oh, swap these and shift K. I should have unapplied all the modifiers. Like I don't know if the opacity here affects shift K. Because I guess I could do a bucket. Oh, okay. I forgot. I didn't have that. Man, it is like glacial with this it's like it's inexplicably unusable with how slow it is because i get that i have a lot of vertices but it's like so what everything has a lot of vertices there's a million vertices in the world okay can i fill is there a fill button? Blur, average, smear. There is no bucket, which is unfortunate, because I'm pretty sure if I do shift K, that's not going to work. Yeah. Can I control Z it? There we go. Ah, well, let's just, let's just, ah. Uh. Why? Why is it this slow? Like, it really can't- it can't be like... Like... Is it because... It must be because of the modifiers, right? Even if they're not being applied in the... You know, right now? Or they're not being shown in the viewport? Like, it must be like trying to recompute stuff? Because like, it can't just be that like... A 50 by 50 mesh. Is like, you know, brought, brings Blender to its knees if you vertex paint it. Oh well, whatever. I'm glad that it at least works the way that I'm intending it to, where I can just like slowly scrub back and forth over it and it applies it in like the fixed opacity.
Okay, let's hope that that looks a little bit better. And then let's do like a little bit more on this side. Is it gonna do anything? Hello? And like you would think it would like, like do some, oh wait, no, it's because I have this set. Does this work? Is this working? Okay, there we go. So I guess I'll do a little bit more green then, because if this didn't affect anything. Do uh, edit mode. Yeah, let's ignore that. Uh, let's do a little bit of this. And I guess I don't need as much green because I don't like how big this area is. But I will. doesn't accept any input whatsoever when you're in C mode. Like, that's so consistently, like, not what I want it to do. So let's just get a little bit of these. And then we'll do like a... a vertex paint. Yeah, so these ones will be darkened a little bit. That's good. These ones will be lighten a little bit. And then... Report Viz. And we'll export that. And I'll close it out of here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, once this is in here and I can see it, I want to, I, I think I want to get the colors where I want them, or where I like them. Yeah, that's much better. I mean, admittedly, 
it did go a little bit too quickly from like puke neon green to nothing. Let's see if I can fix that in the shader. Because that was terrain.tres. Let's do... Uh, wipe out green. So color green, color black, color Y up. Let's do like square root of color that green. Yeah, that's a little bit that's a little bit closer to what I'd expect from that. Cause with it like linearly, actually, I think that's exactly what I was intending. Because I think it's stored as sRGB or whatever it is, like square root like non-linear colors space. I'm pretty sure that was a problem that I had with vertex colors where they actually have gamma correction applied or something like that. So you have to multiply them by 2.2 to get them to be like linear or take them to the power of 2.2. Okay. So now let's feel let's feel out these colors. So now that's a little bit more varied. I should probably also mix some other colors in here soon. And I'll also need more just dynamic, interesting, like, uh, I don't know, colors. What is this? What are these little edges? Hmm. It's a square root? Probably. Probably something to do with it. Yeah, it's probably like Nan or something. What if I did a clamp? Why did it take so long for it to uh, alt tab over? Does clamp work on Nan? I sure hope it does. Well, what if I clamp the color.g first? Okay, so I think it was just some sort of, like... I think it is some kind of interpolation bug, maybe? That would make sense. Like, it interpolates, like, slightly above 1 or slightly, be or slightly below 0, I would think, is the issue. Between the vertices, if at, like, some sort of pixel precision issue. And then it's like, oh, it's negative, so, like, let's let's get screwed, I guess. But actually, to make sure that it's the correct value, what I should do first is actually, uh, what I said. Bring the square root here, clamp it here. So that way, again, it doesn't do, it doesn't go to negatives, but this time, because I don't know what happens when you clamp a NAN value, now it's guaranteed to be more sensible, I think. Okay, this looks, eh, it looks okay, I guess. Yeah, I'll say it's okay. Nothing to write home about, really. Yeah, so now there's a little bit of green. And I'll have to figure out what, uh, what Byro's growing up there. And he'll have his many sons. Feels wrong to have green in here. Like any amount of greenery. Why do I still have two of these? Like, will I ever not have two freaking stamina ups? Let's. Okay, let's do. Let's save here. 
let's make sure that I don't have two stamina ups now. Because I think, I think it's just something wrong with the save system or something wrong with the item system or checkpoint system or whatever it is that keeps giving me stamina boosters. No, okay, now it's fine. Okay, so I guess I just didn't save last time that I, like, ran out of stamina. And I guess, do I want the player to have access to stamina boosters at any time? Because right now, I'm pretty sure you can just go to the shop here, and you can get as many as you want. Or as many as your money will buy. Failed to call animation, show medium on call animation. Oh right, I need to fix some of these. It's been so long since I've been in this place that I haven't actually done any of these. Okay, let's go through uh, 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 dialogue. Shops. But, uh, village shop. Let's do home, no, uh, home, there we go. Okay, I'll see what you have, yeah. So now, yeah, I have five of these. So it's like, I think that's, well, it's almost six times as much stamina as I have base. So then I can probably just climb this straight up. Especially if I'm a little bit uh, wise about it. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, there we go. I mean, that is a lot of gems. So the player can kind of just grind their way into getting, like, sort of whatever they want, really. Or going wherever they want. And I don't know if I want that or if I want it to be more of a discreet upgrade thing. Ah, well. I think it's fine for now. Hmm. I'm mixed on that. I'm mixed on that green. Ah, well. I think the game's coming along pretty well. I'll call that it for today. So I think tomorrow, I'll finish up... Wait, yeah, tomorrow. I'll finish up Byro's farm figure out more stuff there. Let's do... Let's put that in the to-do list. So we're gonna do won't ship. Byro's farm. Let's bring in the farm. His farm hands. The crops. Probably some dialogue around the area. Eh, let's not have that there. That'd be good. And then I'll do, like, dialogue about Byro. Oh. Yeah, I've been doing... I've been doing a good deal. I guess this time I was more fiddling with uh, Blender. But it's been okay. Yeah, let's do... And I'll do a could ship for that one. This one will be nice to have. And is there anything? 
I, I'll figure out that but the rest of that stuff later. Okay. Status. Um, more biro and quest stuff. Models, the form. Probably did into the cave. Oh yeah, I made the doors. Only 144 kilobytes. Interesting. All right. Well, that went pretty well. Yep. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Thanks for stopping by, Alex. Let's see. I'm going to see you tomorrow, hopefully earlier, to continue working. See you then.